Last week, um, we talked about manifestations and the root causes of manifestation. I began to explain last week on to the manifestation of anything that we see in our lives. There is a root to that thing that has manifested. When you look at an apple tree, you look at the fruit and you know that it was not an orange seed that was planted in order to manifest what you're looking at. You know that there was an apple seed that was placed in the ground that germinated and with the perfect conditions, sunlight, nutrients in the soil, water, perfect conditions allowed that seed to crack open underground, begin to germinate and start to stretch roots down into the ground, roots on top of roots on top of roots, growing on top of each other and going down underneath the surface to anchor that tree so that over time with those conditions continually in place, that tree would manifest above the ground after the root had already been planted. And I used an analogy or an example, things that we see manifested in our lives, characteristics that we carry, the way that we response, respond to people, things, situations, circumstances in our lives. There is a root cause to why we become promiscuous. There's a root cause to why we will shut down a relationship if we even feel like someone's about to hurt us. Why we have low self-esteem. There's a root cause to, you know, why we don't express love to our own children. There's a root cause to why we have certain relationships with men. There's a root cause to why we carry a certain, you know, women in relationships with women a certain way. There's a root cause to everything that you see that is manifested in your life. There's a root. And so basically last week what we started to discuss was talking about recognizing the manifestation, acknowledging the low self-esteem, the promiscuity, the coping mechanisms that don't serve you, uh, the, the way that you approach relationships, the way that you leave relationships, the way that you are an employee on a job. Those manifestations of your character, of your, your personality, or just the way that you respond to situations and people in your life, there's a root cause for that. And a lot of times it's relationships with people in your life who have victimized you or who have hurt you um, when they really should have been showing you a measure of love and protection that they failed to do so. So last week, I used the example of a seed of abandonment. And I talked about how Maybe your father wasn't there. Whether he just walked away and was like, nope. Whatever the case is, there was a seed planted when that happened. That seed was placed into the, the soil of your life and began to take root. And in and of itself developed roots growing on top of it and with the perfect conditions, for example, living in a home with a single mother who was an alcoholic or who didn't give you attention or who um, put men before you or compared you to your siblings and you came out on the bottom all the time or had you slaving like Cinderella while your siblings could do whatever they wanted to do or treated your friends better than she treated you or those are all perfect conditions to help that negative seed that has been planted in the soil of your life to germinate and manifest things that you see on the surface of your life, such as drug abuse, as alcoholism, poor coping mechanisms, abandoning relationships before they, you know, when you see yourself really starting to feel for somebody, low self-esteem, promiscuity. All of these things are manifestations of this one root that has been planted. 
So at the end of the day, we really have to get to the point where we're willing to acknowledge that there are some coping mechanisms that we use or some characters about ourselves, characteristics or personality traits that we have adapted over time as defense mechanisms and responses to people in our relationships. We need to earn, unearth the core of where those things come from so that we, we can begin to beautify the garden of our lives. Dig down, find the root, pull it up and replace it with the beauty that is our true and authentic self the way that God intended for us to be so that we can impact others the way that he intends for us to do so. And as long as we're hurting and our garden is covered with weeds with their own roots, there's no way that we can really effectively parent. There's no way we can effectively uh, impact people on our jobs. We can't become effective leaders in, in our communities as women, as entrepreneurs. We can't. We just, we, how are you going to be that queen wife that your husband needs you to be when your garden is covered in roots and weeds and all kind of foolishness that doesn't belong? So in order to get us to the journey, get, get, start the journey, um, of becoming our authentic and true self. Mind you, I'm still on this journey, y'all. I'm just, hey, this is just me documenting my journey. I am an imperfect child who has been assigned with the mission to help my imperfect sisters, other imperfect children along this journey of healing and the destination of finding your authentic self and falling madly in love with you and finding that you are worthy of putting yourself first, that you, what you have been called to do is important and that you matter. But anyway, so these are the steps that I came up with for my own life. Now, you can add to this, you can take away from this. This is just me sharing Melly's journey and what Melly has found to, that is working for her as I notice the manifestations that are negative in my life that don't serve me anymore that I'm trying to get rid of so that I can beautify the garden of my own life. Step number one is take notice of the thing that has manifested in you or in your life that you wish to adjust. What? Maybe I should. Y'all see me. <laughs> It's a mess back there. Don't look back there, okay? Okay, guys. Step number one. Take notice of the thing that has manifested in you or in your life that you wish to adjust. Whether it is an auto response to situations. Um, and what I mean by that is uh, how you respond to a person when they, when they say something. There's triggers that people unknowingly bring when they're in communication with you that cause you to respond automatically a certain way. And I'm gonna give you an example of that. Um, I had such low self-esteem that when a person would give me a compliment, um, initially I would, I would uh, shy away from the compliment. I didn't feel like I deserved it. Um, I would perform and you know, whether it was in church where and, um, people would come up to me and they'd be like, oh my God, they'd come in tears. I didn't how I sang that song, girl, you sang that song. <laughs> and I'm like, like, okay, this is making me uncomfortable. Uh, they were appreciating the value that I just extended to them. And I did not know how to receive that because well, how does a young girl with self-esteem baggage accept a compliment? So my dad, finally, he kind of noticed this and he was like, Melly, say thank you. You deserve the compliment. You witnessed to them, you ministered to them just say thank you because i would say things like oh you know well, it's all god you know bless god you know, oh you know whatever i would put it put it off of me and not receive the 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 appreciation because i didn't appreciate my own gift i didn't appreciate yeah i just look okay that is an example of what i mean by an auto response to a situation Okay, there's a trigger that was hit there. So these are automatic responses, manifestations that are, are, um, that are triggered by things. And you have to, to realize what the manifestation is and then make the adjustment 
by drilling down to the root like we're doing. So again, continuing on with step one, take notice of the thing that is manifested in your life that you wish to adjust. Whether it's an auto response to a situation like we just talked about, a trust issue, Lord have mercy, do we have trust issues, especially if you were abandoned by a parent or a, a spouse. Um, judgmental attitudes, Woo, some of us can really look down our noses at people, can't we? Uh, fear, if it's fear, if it's low self-esteem, whatever it is, you need to find the manifestation in your own life. Acknowledge it for what it is. Don't judge it. Don't condemn yourself. It's there. Now you just have to acknowledge that it's there and be determined to find the root and dig down and pull it. So that takes us to step two. Step two, acknowledge it without judging it. Don't judge it. Don't be like, oh my God, I'm such a horrible person. Oh my God, people must really see. Oh, my slip is hanging. They see. They, people got to see my low self-esteem when I do that. That is so trifling. Why do I do that? Don't, don't judge it. Just acknowledge it. Then trace it back to the root. Where does this come from? Ask yourself when it started and trace it back as far as you can until you can locate the root from which the manifestation came. Okay, step three, decide what you're going to do with the findings. So you traced it and you found that it has a direct, that the fact that your father abandoned you, not one, not two, not three, not five times, but seven times in your life, like mine, has affected the way that you have relationships with men, the way that you trust, the way that you fear abandonment and the things that happen in your life that cause you to, to be triggered into responding automatically in a certain way, that has become your defensive blanket, that has become your defensive mechanism, all right? So decide what you're gonna do with your findings. I found mine for my low self-esteem, uh, the fact that I was so impressed that a man was impressed with me. I'm so impressed with the fact that you're impressed with me. I'm not even thinking about the fact that you're an idiot, that you are not meant for my life, that you are a liar, that you are a cheat. I am ignoring every single red flag that is possible to be seen. That you showing me right up from the front. Why? Because I was abandoned by my father. And that is a and now I'm looking for acceptance, validation from a man who ain't measuring up to nothing that my, my daddy means or intends for my life. Daddy meaning my heavenly father. Because you are not a fatherless child. Let me tell you something. I am not a fatherless child. Yes, my natural father abandoned me. But at the end of the day, I have a heavenly father who has been there from day one. Day one, day negative one. Okay? And if when we realize and embrace that, that's when you begin to heal. Uh, promiscuity. Um, I began to engage in indulgent relationships just simply because somebody found me interesting. Forget the fact that it was just sex. Mm. Forget the fact that they I was a side chick. For th forget the fact that they didn't even tell me they were married. But they're, they find me interesting. They find me attractive. Oh my God. Then it's like, wow, what do you see in me? This is, this is what's up. And you become in, you begin to embrace the idea that someone finds you interesting, finds you attractive, finds you worthy of being in your space because your daddy didn't. And now, so low self-esteem, promiscuity, um, superficial relationships, all of this foolishness is the manifestation of this root. The bulb of the root was my daddy and his, his, his abandonment of me. Um, but let's continue on with step three. Tracing back the root to your, if the tracing back to your root lands you to a person, then you need to explore openly, honestly, and without abandon every aspect of that relationship and its direct effect on you. Uh, the other thing that I said here, if you find that the relationship has been and is still a toxic relationship that no longer serves you, then decide unapologetically to release it as completed. Just release it as completed. You ain't, this does not have to be a drama scene, okay? You ain't got to call them up and be like, you know what, let me tell you a couple things before I shut you out my life. It doesn't have to be that way. You can peacefully release a person from your life 
call it completion without it being a dramatic exchange.